Hi, I'm Andre. I'm going to show you how to grab an object using a physics constraint. So let's see how it works. So if I left click, left -click I can grab the object. It holds it uh, near the camera. And if I left click again, it lets it go. Also, if I right click, I can throw the object or I can poke other objects without grabbing them. There's also the functionality that when I scroll it increases the distance where I hold the object. So usually this is done in most tutorials using the physics handle but I've chosen to use the physics constraint because it has two advantages. One is that it's easier to configure and the other one is that in the event tick we don't have to update anything uh, every frame like we do for the physics handle. We just set it up and it works. So let's see how we can do this. So I'll get rid of this. I have a player character here. It's uh, basically empty except the uh, movement uh, code. So we're going to use this. So let's just make this possess here so we can play with it. Okay, so let's go ahead and here, so we're going to use a physics constraint. Now, because the physics constraint needs two objects to work, uh, we're going to create the first one for it. So we're just going to use a static mesh that we're going to call the object slot. So this is going to be used as an anchor when the physics constraint grabs the object that we're looking at. And to this we're going to parent a physics constraint. Like this. We call this grab constraint. Like that. Now let's go ahead and quickly configure this. So we'll free everything. Linear and angular limits. And we'll impose uh, we'll use linear motor and angular motor to keep the object in place. So let's put here 1000 and here we'll put 100 and for the angular we activate twist and swing and again 1000 and 100. So now we configure the physics constraint. Let's go ahead and configure the hold object slot, which is we're going to just use a sphere for this. It doesn't matter because we won't actually see it in game. But what matters is so we're going to hide it in game here, check hidden in game. And for the collision, go to custom, make sure that it's collision enabled query and physics. Activate it and check ignore everything. Okay, so we can see we've uh, configured this. Now let's see how we can uh, do this. So first we'll do this and the input fire, action fire. So when we left click. So let's see. So first when we press left click, we're gonna trace for objects then we're gonna if there is an object we're gonna grab it so this so let's create the functions for this trace objects and grab object and we'll also have drop object for now And we're also going to need a variable that remembers which uh, component we've grabbed. So uh, we'll have held object like that. It's going to be a primitive component like this. So we'll say when we press fire, we're going to check if this is valid uh, not like this like this 
if it's valid, then that means we're holding an object. So we're gonna have to drop it. So we'll execute drop. And then if we're not holding an object, then we need to trace for objects. And if we find any objects, we're gonna grab them. Okay. So let's go ahead and trace, make the trace. So we'll use line trace for objects and we're going to have to give it object types here. So drag from this and say make and we'll select physics body, but you can add others if you want. And we need to set the start and end. So we're, we want it to be from the camera, from where we're looking at. So we drag the camera and we say get location, get world location actually. So this is going to be our start point and the end point is going to be, we're taking the forward vector of the camera. So the direction in which we're looking and um, we're going to multiply that by a float which is going to be the distance to which we're looking for an object so let's create here interaction distance like that there's going to be a float and we drag this and let's put it right now to a thousand which is going to be 10, 10 meters. So we drag this into the end. Okay. So we have our trace. Now for the um, parameters that go out of the function, we're going to have a hit result of type hit result. Like that, oh, sorry. And we're gonna have a hit, which is gonna tell us if it hit something or not, of type boolean. So we'll just connect them from the trace. And this is our trace function. Okay, so we've got the trace function here. Now we're going to say if we hit something, we're going to branch from that. So if we've actually hit something, then we're going to grab. Otherwise, there's no point. So let's go ahead and create the grab object function. So when we're grabbing an object, what we're going to do is move the held object. Because we've put the grab constraint parent it to this, it's going to move with this. <coughs> so we're simply going to take the held object slot <coughs> and place it where the trace hit hit the object. Okay, so if we hit here, we place it here. And then we activate the constraint and it's going to lock the objects together. If we want it, we could put also in the middle of the objects. So we'll see that now. Let's go ahead and move the held object slot. So we're going to set its world position, location actually, like that. And the location will know from the hit result that we're going to add. So we'll add the hit result input here of type hit result. And we're going to break that down. So again, as said, you can put it either at the impact point where the trace hit at the surface, or if we want in the middle of the object, if we want to grab the objects from the middle, we just take the hit component and say, get world loca uh, location, like this. But we're going to grab it from the impact point like this. So let's go ahead and check teleport here. So when we move the 
object doesn't uh, calculate physics or something. So now we have to activate the constraints. We take the constraint from here and set its constraint components like this. Now the first component is going to be the head object slot like we've talked before and the second one is going to be the component of the object that we've hit. So we take the hit component from here and we'll also drag the hit bone name because this is going to be used when we are dealing with the skeletal meshes. So it's actually grabbing the bone itself, not the whole body. <laughs> okay, so we set this. Now we have to disable the collision between the object that we grabbed and the player character. So you, it's not mandatory to do this, but it's just better. So we'll take, we have from here the hit component, like this. And we'll say set collision response to channel, like this. And for the pawn, because the character is a pawn, we'll say ignore. And then we just have to set the held object. Like this. And so this is it. So now if you try it out, it should work. Let's see. It doesn't. Let's see why. Let's take this. A little bit of debugging. So there's a problem here. Let's see. Did we set the interaction? Yes, we did. The hit result. Physics body. So this should work, actually. Yes, as you can see, we didn't uh, connect the hit result. But I think it stopped at the branch, so we might have another problem, yes. So let's see. Here. If I do this again. So it doesn't pass the hit here. There's a problem. Grab world, get world location. Yes, because we need a plus here. So I've made an error. So we actually have to add the direction to the location uh, of the camera. Yes. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's try again. So now, as we can see, we can grab it, no problem, but we can't drop it. So let's see how we can drop it in the event graph here. So let's go into the function. So we'll just say, take the held object. Uh, first, we're going to take the grab constraint and uh, we'll break it. So if we break this, then it should let the object go. Now we're going to have to reactivate its collision. Uh, set collision response to channel. And we'll say for the pawn, we'll say block. And then we're going to have to set the held object to null. So we do this here. So let's try again now. So I can grab it and then I can let it go. Okay, this is fun. Now, 
let's see how we can um, poke it so we have this here let's so we poke it with the right click so right mouse button like this and then we're gonna have the same thing here we're gonna check if we're holding or not an object if we're holding then we're gonna throw the object if not we're gonna trace so if we're not holding then we're gonna trace like here like this okay let's create a function for uh, poke like that So uh, we'll take this poke and yes. So let's go ahead and create the fun the function. So first we have an input. We have an input a hit result of type hit result and yeah, this is sufficient. We're gonna break this and to poke the object we're going to use add impulse at location like this um, and this is not this the target will be the hit component let's also plug in the bone name and let's see what we do with the location and the impulse. So the location will be actually the point where we hit it. Like this. The impulse will be the this the, the, um, the orientation of the camera. So the forward vector of the camera. So the direction in which we're looking. So let's take the camera from here. Uh, take this. So we'll say forward vector and because we want to give it a certain amplitude then we're gonna uh, multiply it by a float which this we're gonna add a variable here for book power like that and we'll multiply it here and let's give this so this will be a big number so let's say a hundred thousand so we'll input this into the impulse so this is the poke function this should already work like this we just have to connect the hit result like this so let's test this out and we'll come back for when we're holding the object so if I click, as you can see, I can poke. And uh, the bigger the object, the uh, less it's gonna affect it. So that's normal because it's an impulse. Okay, so here, uh, let's drag this down a bit. So here we're already holding an object. So for the poke function to work, we're gonna have to make a hit result for it. So it's going to be a fake hit result because we're not going to trace for anything. But we already know in here in the poke function, we already know we use the impact point, the hit component and the bone name. So the bone name we're not going to use because we're just, we're going to affect the entire component. But we'll take the hit hold object and connect it to component here. And then uh, for the impact point, we're going to use its location. So we get world location like this. So we're actually going to, when we're holding it, we're going to poke it in the middle, in its center, like this. So now we can poke it when we hold it, but we have to let it go first, otherwise, it will just jerk a little bit and it will stay there because the physics constraint is still active so we'll drop object like this and then we can poke it 
So this happens in one frame, so it shouldn't you shouldn't see any difference because you drop it. Now there is one problem with this here in the drop object. We we set held object to nothing, so we'll we'll just take this from here, because if you look here, it would it was gonna drop object. Then you set the held object to nothing, so when it reaches this, it tries to get the held object, and then it will have nothing here. So there would be no data. So we'll have to move the set to set the head object to null at the end, like you see here. Otherwise, we wouldn't have any results for this, so it wouldn't work. So let's try this out again. So I'm grabbing this and I right click, grab and right click. Okay. So Everything works nice. So let's see. We said that we're gonna implement a, when we scroll to increase and decrease the distance. So we're gonna do that using the mouse down. Mouse will down and mouse will up. Like this. So this is when we scroll up and this is when we scroll down. So when we scroll up, it's gonna, we're gonna take the held object and move it further away like that. So let's see, we get its relative location and we're gonna add to it like that. So let's add, let's say 50. And then we're gonna set its location again. Like this. So we drag from here and we put this to the location. And the same thing goes for the other one, but just with a minus here. Like that. Of course, you can make this into a function. So what we're basically doing, if we're looking here, we're taking this object and we, when we're scrolling up, we're doing this. When we scroll down, we're going back. Okay. So let's see. So if I grab this and I scroll, it's actually the other way around. Why is it that? So if I do, yes, it should be the other way around. So it's like this. It's minus here. So if I try again, it works as it should. Okay. So we've made this work. The last thing to make is the, um, now, uh, now we're, we're grabbing the object and it stays in place. We want it to come back to the camera. So to come to a certain distance to the camera. So for that, we're going to need an object which tells us the default location from the camera. So we're going to use an arrow for that. Like this. So we'll say held object default location like this. So we're going to bring the held object here if the grabbing place is not true. So for that, we're going to create a variable here that's called grab in place, which is going to be a Boolean. So let's think about it. We've grabbed it and we want it to come uh, towards the camera. So we do this in the put action fire here after we grab the object. So we're going to take the held object slot and we're going to move it. Move component two, like this. The rotation is going to be the same. So we'll, we'll take get rotation from itself, which is going to be the relative rotation like this. But the location is going to be the location of the held object default location. Now, because this 
one and hold object slot are within the same parent, which is first person camera, we can or take it take its uh, relative location because they are compatible. So get relative location. like this and we're gonna use is in is out and let's say over 0 0.3 seconds so this should do the trick but we just need a branch here so we won't do it every time we're just doing it when grabbing in place is false actually so we drag from false okay so let's save and because by default it's false grab in place let's see here where is it I'll just search for it well, that's weird maybe it's not yes because we have to make it editable for the instance and so we should find it here so if I don't check grab in place it will take the object to the camera and yes we have a problem because our arrow that we set here should be somewhere in front of the camera like this so let's try again now so as you can see, it comes to the camera. I can drop it. I can take it back again. No, I can't because there is a problem. So apparently we made the mistake. I can't. Um, I can't take it back. Uh, let's see why. There's a small bug here. So let's see. So if I try to grab it again, it finds that, yes, because that, because we poked the object and we, and we forgot to remedy this. So we've taken this out uh, to set to null the hold object, but we forgot to put it here also. So now if we look again, then it should work yes so as you can see I can affect the objects no problem so this is kind of it um, now just for a minute I could show you how we can configure the physics constraint to be different stuff so I've seen that some people want the, the object to remain uh, with the same world rotation and because if you look here when we grab it now it actually orients to the camera and this might be good some for some but not for everybody so if we want it to stay like this right, it's the same rotation and only slide then what we have to do is in the physics constraint Leave the angular limits free, but deactivate the angular motors like this, uncheck them. And now we go to, uh, well, the object, if we lock its rotation, then as you can see, it's locked. So we have to do the same thing here. So when we grab it, like this we would want to set its rotation so hit component like this so set lock so we're gonna have to set this a custom plane so let's drag from here uh, Well, just let's just set a plane, for example. Well, actually, it's constraint mode, custom plane. 
type it's an enum I think this is done from the actor no so if you look here constraints lock rotation mode custom plane default no it should be here so yeah I can't remember this now but you should set the constraint mode here like you have it here so you just set it here and then redo it when you let the object go yeah so I, I yeah it, it escapes me right now I can't um, I can't remember how we use the enum but um, yeah so that's how you do it so there's also so let's reactivate this again as you can see in this mode right now because it's free to rotate it will do something like this which is interesting yeah and you can do the same thing with the um, yeah so let's grab it from the middle like we said before so if we go here in the grab we'll just get rid of this you can do this uh, very easily i have to look for it can't remember for it right now so instead of grabbing it from the impact point here we're just gonna grab it from its location so you say get world location like this and if we compile again i'll see that it's grabbed from the middle and it does actually stay at the in, with the same rotation but not because it it's locked but because we are not affecting it because if i if i touch the wall you see it will start rotating yeah so this is it i hope this has been useful please uh, like comment and don't forget to subscribe